African African Youth Parliament, as you know, we discuss Africa because Africa is our land. Africa and our mama land, too. Africa is our motherland. And on Africa here, on the OIP, on African Youth Parliament, we talk about Africa and everything that concerns Africa. So last week, we even had a conversation that was so beautiful that got me thinking, that gave me something to even think about during the week. And, you know, the more we have this show, the more I realize that there's a lot, the more I realize how deep we have been, how far we have gone, how further back we've gone from a true Africanism. But every time we are always here and it is time to talk about Africa again. So a wonderful thanks to you, Ajoki Ade, for joining us today. Thank you very much for joining us today. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Big thanks to our mommy, mommy Adekemi Adetoye. Thank you very much. It's, so, it's a pleasure to have you here. And yes, you can see Omo Obaluaye. Oh, yeah, I think that can be interpreted to Omo Babaluaye. Omo Obaluaye. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Welcome. I guess that is our Ujo Inola. Ujo Inola, welcome on the show, Omo Obaluaye. Nice one. So that is Africa at work. We thank Africa, and it is a pleasure to be here. So today, you know what? We are going to be talking about something again, something yet interesting. Africa is so diverse. Africa is so loaded. If I'm telling you loaded, Africa is so loaded. You know? And Africa is beautiful. And Africa is so beautiful in, so, in many ways. So, you know, the more we read about Africa, the more we investigate what Africa was, the more we do our studies and research, we keep finding new things and we keep finding beautiful things. And today we're going to be talking about something even very interesting, and that is politics and leadership in Africa. You know, before colonization, before colonization, we realized that, ah, wow, well, so we had a form of government. And my, one of my most interesting uh, singers, and that is Fela Anikulapo and some Kuti, a very interesting uh, singer, you know, we realized that ah, Fela did something, he sang something very interesting. And that is, he said, demo crazy, crazy demo, demonstration of crazy, crazy demonstration. If you know be crazy, but for Africa, if we want the crazy, but for Africa, he sang that song. That song, I heard that song when I was still a child, uh, when I was still, you know, just a son of my father in the house, and I was still a young boy. But that song never left my mind. It's not like the track where they sang, teacher, teacher, like, you know, teacher, don't teach me nonsense. Yes, that is the track. If you search for teacher, don't teach me nonsense, you will find it there. So that was where he sang the song. And democracy, I used to sing it then, democracy, crazy, crazy demo, you know, demonstration of crazy, crazy demonstration. He said, they taught us what we didn't understand. They taught us what we did not know. And then the people you taught, they failed at it, yet you left them to do it. And, you know, they kept failing and failing and failing and just failing to today. And I can even bet tomorrow they will still probably fail. You know, this keeps going on. So then it made me question that, ah, hey, wow, well, we don't use democracy in Africa. Then what should we use? What are you talking about, Baba Fela? Baba Fela? What are you talking about? I kept reading. And then Africa Youth Parliament and Dudu Spray exposed me to this fact that well, there has been something before that, that we are Africans, we are not Europeans. We didn't start out with democracy. Democracy was installed or not, it was put or not. We were made to use democracy. Ah, democracy care. Like, what? you know, then we started, I started reading more and digging deep. So, but before I continue, I would like to thank everybody that's listening to us right now. You know, this is the world of Milara. I would like to thank everybody that's listening to us right now on, on our radio, on Dudu Square FM. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you. To everybody that is listening to us on YouTube, watching us right now on YouTube, I say a very big thank you. And to everybody on Twitter, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on TikTok, wherever you are listening to us, it is beautiful to have you as our audience. And we will hope that one day you'll be able to join us on this show. So, and this is what we're here to talk about today. So this crazy demonstration, this demonstration of crazy and everything. So what form of government were we using before? Is it that there, was nothing, there is nothing better than democracy? Because so far, so good. I can't see how this democracy is working for us. So I, I would like to point out my own opinion yet because I am the speaker of today's house. I am your honorable domain. And so I would like to talk about it here because I would like you to have your 
scant, polluted, undiluted opinion on this matter. So please let us share our opinions on uh, what we think about this topic. I can see the pictures Ajoke Ade is uh, dropping on the platform, and you know it is very, very interesting to see things like this because actually you wonder like, ah, wow, <laughs> there has been a lot. So how did the things we'll be highlighting? How did this thing get across to us? How did we start using the political system of the of the Europeans? And how did why? Because you have to understand the how, the why, what result were they trying to get? Was it out of love for us? Did they love us so much that they said, Oh, these people, you are so good? And then if it is so much love, then why are are we using their own political system? Is it that our own political system is inferior? So why? All this, and this is what we're just trying to understand. So today, follow us, join us, let us know what you think about this. And I'd like everybody to express their own unbiased opinion. Let us talk about it. So, uh, Mommy Adekemi, are you there? Should we start with you? Or who would like to go first? If you'd like to go first, just simply raise up your hands. You know, it should be very interesting to have it that way. And uh, it should be very interesting to have it that way. So, Africa and colonization. So to, the, the topic for today, as everybody, as you can all have it now, we have the effect of colonization in Africa. So today we are treating the politics and the system. So now, okay, let's start with Omo uh, Obaluayi. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable. Thank you for this opportunity and thank you very much to this pray for the first time only pan african radio yes um though i don't know much about the way politics was in africa before we were colonized but i'm sure that at least our forefathers then that was draining because i'm very sure that we africans then we were practicing the i think monarchical government that is we use kings queens kings mostly kings 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 and they ruled well our kings then and our chiefs they they did well everyone was okay there was nothing like um much of killing murder people are stealing because of desperation like everything is going on well then but now that we are colonized, now we are practicing democracy rights. And this particular democracy we are practicing is not even democracy. They say the government of the people by the plan of the people. We the people now, we can't even decide that this is what we want. It's not possible. They won't. We just decide and we decide, I call decide being. It's just dumb, rubbish. It's not going to work out. They're not going to listen to us at all. Many things, they're not even following us. They don't care about we the people. They can just decide to do anything. We suffer, we don't, it's not their damn business, it's just their home. That's what they know. But after this colonization, we have to follow the rules and regulations of these white people. They decide for us. Before we can do many things, they have to tell us who even knows the secret behind all these things. But I've said it, I don't know much about politics, but I'm very sure in Africa, our forefathers ruled well. If you we say we should dig back into history, the way our forefathers ruled then, the way our forefathers ruled then, everything was okay. There's nothing like scarcity of food. Scarcity of food and many things we are facing now. Most of the problems we are facing now, those stuff didn't exist in those days, in our forefathers' days. But now, different things, different things, different things. But well, in African East Parliament, you're also here to learn. I've said I don't know much about this. So I would like to hear from everyone. So thank you very much, Honorable Host, and thank you very much, Louis Perifem. Okay, thank you very much, Omobaluaye. Uh, okay. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, we, we like what you said, uh, Joe. Okay, so we'd like to go to the next person now, to the next speaker. So, you know, is it that the colonial system of governance that was handed down to us, is it that it's so bad? Or what exactly is the problem? You know, maybe the, uh, democracy, uh, democracy or any kind of foreign government that was handed to any other, um, any other African country is probably working. You know, then according to our research, we had kingdoms. And in those kingdoms, of course, kingdom means kings. 
when we even had empires, under empires were kingdoms, then, you know, towns, there was, there was a particular setting. We had a strict setting. So, but first, then, but now we now have democracy, you know, we have governments, we have senators, we have, of course, uh, we have president, government, governors, senators, we have uh, local government. I don't even know the local government chairman in Nigeria, but we're, we're supposed to know all this. So, but now, you know, we have a new form of government. And now, if you're there, would you like to go now? So, let's hear, what do you think about this? What do you, what's your opinion? Thank you very much, Lady Lua. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. It's a pleasure having me here. Um, and I thank the previous people for the support. Um, talking about this issue about democracy, I think my own question is, does democracy really um, have effects in Nigeria? No, I want to talk about the government of the people. The people are, the people are, are even further separated or divided into two. We have the minority and the majority. So, and in this case of Nigeria, it, I feel as if, even when it comes to election, it is the, it is the minority that has charge about the majority, when, which is not supposed to be so, Where, whereby some people think who, who will be there. If I say it is you, I'll be there, forget it, it is you, I'll be there. People like, I won't, I won't mention him to avoid some interaction. People like our president, our president and um, president. If you say that man, you are the next governor of Lagos State. In fact, key opponents, key audio show, forget it is done here. So it is the minority that control that controls the majority in Nigeria now. And when I look back to um Yoruba own culture, like our Yoruba own way of governance, we have the Afobaje, we have the Oloye. And we have the Ilu, we have the Alawo, we have the Oboni. So if the king say uh, bye 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 bye, and if the oh, wife say no, mm -mm, bye, the say, and even if the Oboni say yes, so you have, you have people that actually check meet the king in the in the Yoruba religion. So, but okay, even the um, um, OC, even as state among the chiefs, OC is the head. Then we have our own. Um, uh, normal way of doing our own things. The Yoruba governance is very, very easy and straightforward. Not like the normal democracy. It is even the democracy. I can, I can imagine the um, election week whereby. So, so, so I, see very, I, I remember the the military regime whereby there is army everywhere. That election week, the the streets were, were filled with a lot of soldiers. I was like, ah, kill on Shelly, are they going to war? So this kind of situation, because I know anything can happen. You can't even you can't even run a fair and fair election. Is that is that democracy? That's not democracy to me. Because now you, you see this governance of um I'm I'm just suggesting and you pick it up from me being me saying I suggest. So there are some things going on. Okay. We have the um uh Senate president and we have the president, the the federal president. So in the number of times during the, the Bari regime, the Bari being the president and um Saraki Bukala and um, Kenya being the Senate president, there are a lot of arguments between these two, a lot of conflict. Why do you say this and now say this? A lot of attacking you, attacking me. I'm like, ah, hey, this is Nigeria also. So uh, all this kind of situation. So you if you believe that it's um democracy, to me it's not because it's only happening because one is ABC and one is PDP. So that's where the counter attack <laughs> starts from. And then Nigeria is a O. Nigeria is a O. There are things that happened in some parts of Nigeria which is not happening in other parts. Like, on, 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 for instance, now, in south southwestern part of Nigeria, which is the Yoruba land, there, there are some rules. There's some government rules that more like that that is very very effective. When in when in not, not, not part, it is least effective. Like the Sharia law, like some things are not even like the law are not even working the way it should work. So I think this is not even this is not democracy. This is not democracy at all. The British have just allowed like according to the um, history I read, the British have just allowed this so-called 
not that nice to rule about this will be so and this will be also always always be so because they see they see them as people that are easy are easy to control. So to me it's not democracy at all. So let me just let's do it for you. Let me let me let you see. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Saifa Elevi Ulua. It's so good to have you. Once again, a big, uh, very, very, very big thanks to everybody who is listening to us right now. A very big thanks to everybody who is watching us right now. And a very big thanks to Dudu Swear from the first and only truly Pan African radio. You know, we are talking about a political system in Africa before, uh, before colonial, uh, colonialization, before we were colonized. And you know, the leadership sets how everything was before they came in here. And you know, we like to understand that, you know, this is Africa. I'm sure the reason why most of us are using Yoruba, for example, is because Yoruba is what we know and, you know, that is what we're used to. So, you know, Africa is very wonderful. Africa is big, Africa is huge, and uh, as we know that, you know. So, but we like to know, I, I was reading and I realized in Africa, actually, Almost everywhere in Africa, you know, kingship, it was based on kingship and lineage, you know. We believed, number one, a people in a setting, everybody were from the same place, we are all related. So it is easy for us to say, okay, you, you can lead us. Or there was usually uh, a royal family. So this is now universal in Africa, not just in Yoruba land. You know, so they were, or you know, some people believe that they were, they had this royal blood or something, but they always had a leader, either selected, elected, or born, the born king. You know, because now the the system checked everything. They had a religious system that was used to select the king. So you you can't be the king without the, the traditional religion. You know, then. So we are selected, everybody is selected by the, by the virtue of everything. Everything contributes to everything. Everything supports everything. So they are based on uh, elaborate systems of checks and balances. Everybody is checking everybody. Then secondly, our political succession was carefully institutionalized in a way that, you know, that family, clans, and ethnic competition for power, it was minimized. There's no way that, uh, you know, parties, political parties are fighting against each other. Now it is about who everybody is working for one plan. If you have a better plan, I bring it to you. Everybody's advising everybody. And thirdly, you know, the basic political unit was, you know, village to village, from the smallest to, to the highest. You know, where also major decisions were concerning the society were adopted from the smallest levels. What is concerning the smallest people, the majority of the people, is what we work on. They call it the state societies, you know, everybody, and then it was only centralized. Either you know a king or a larger political, you know, it's like a, like when we have something like an empire, so like the Oyo Empire, for example. So we had different empires all over Africa. In Mali, there was an empire in Mali, you know, that that was famous. There are many empires everywhere, but it was very famous too. So the kings they built their countries. You know, they were concerned about their countries. Uh, the, their you know they didn't use country then. But there are people, their lands, you're concerned about things like that. So the their own search for power was entangled to the development of their community. They had to go as far. So if they are pulling themselves up, they have to pull the country up, their towns and villages up, because that is the only way it, it could grow. And that was how it was working for them. So not like now. So then now, you know, we have to understand, we have to compare and contrast. We are not supporting, we are not opposing anybody. Yet we are supporting our opposing. So should we, why did we now decide, if it was our decision, why did we decide, did we decide to change this political system? Because accordingly, it was working so well. But though, at the end of the day, we uh, there was anarchy in some parts because some people wanted to rule alone. Only my blood can rule, you know, and this. That means if there's, uh, let's say, the royal blood is from Larry's lineage and I, I have... I could lead. Well, no, that would not even apply because if you are good enough, they will select you and put you on the cabinet. I'll use cabinet because that is what we can use for now. That is the best word for now. So, but now, you know, some people, uh, we read of kings selling people, 
because you know in our royal blood, kings selling people. We don't know how true everything is. So, but now I want to look at it from all dimensions. Would it have been better to have stayed with the African political system or the switching they did forcibly or however it was done? Is it better now? So that is what we want to share all over Africa. Because all over Africa, we can we've discovered that there's um that Africa is just that is just how everybody is chief and you know, is either they use the chieftaincy, king or something throughout the kingdoms, it is chiefdoms, they use chiefdoms, let's use it as they are chiefdoms, they were ubiquitous everywhere throughout the uh, throughout the pre-colonial Africa for over a millennium, for thousands of years. That was how we did it. And that was the primary institution of governance across African continent. So that is, and we had supporting offices of councils and advisors and subordinate chiefs and commanders and army commanders and generals. So the chiefs, they, consol uh, they consolidated their control over productive resources and trades. The kings, everybody had their own rules. We accumulated the wealth because we wanted to build our people and have a name. We were very much concerned about leaving a name behind. We, they increased their authorities then and their power to control large areas, you know, and these roads, they had to do it the best way they could then. But now, so what happened? How did the structure change? And the structure, is it positive to us or is it negative to us? Let us look at it from every angle possible. So I'm sure that um, uh, Joki Ade, are you ready now? Or Mommy Adekemi, who should we go with first? So, okay, but uh, Mommy Adekemi, okay, Joki Ade, thank you very much, Joki Ade. Let's have it. Thank you. Okay, uh, good day to everybody, and I am happy to be in the parliament today. It's a great day, although yeah, so many things have been happening, and I say congratulations to all the juvenile harvesters all over the globe. That is Celestia Church of Christ. Uh, when it is turning to image in a new budget, and they all the pa agbaye isheshe. So what we are talking today actually is making us to think in retrospect. How did we get here? I guess our forefathers were too complacent, they were too greedy, and they were too, you know, just like the Bible says, woe to those who are at ease in Zion. They were at ease in Zion. And before they knew it, the guns came. Before the colonization, we have been selling each other. Before the Brits came, before the Portuguese came, we in Africa, we have been strong ally with the Arabs and the sales. In fact, the Shokoto Kalite is a great example where millions of indigenous people were sold into slavery. Quite a number of them came back. We have the Shua Arab people, who no longer have the African indigenous language, but they have now indigenized the Arab, the Arabic language spoken on the, you know, like uh, when you go to Tunisia, Egypt, so we know this is our story. And uh, with our sense of responsibility, I came from a long lineage of people who had um, participated in this. Because one of my family, Oriki, says, With all sense of responsibility, I disassociate myself from such practice. And that is why every day of my life, I do my best to give back to the society. This is me. And uh, beautiful enough, you know, maternally, I came from a long, what we call the old ruling house. And paternally, I came from the current ruling house in the same village. So my paternal family, they were the ones that encouraged my maternal village. And it, when they got to my maternal village, my mom, old ruling house, gave them land, my paternal family land. And then they loved the way one of them was doing. And apparently the one of the descent of our Odudua, the great Odudua, which would happens to be a female. 
So I'm actually from OKMC, Kitty. So everybody who knows the history of the town, we corroborate what I'm saying. So when they came, my partner, the current ruling house, ended up encroaching. In fact, they did so well that they named, you know, they renamed streets, just like we experience now. They also came from a part of your land, the Messi, late to be precise. They got to okay, Messi, they encroached. And then my maternal family ended up giving them the kingship. That I always tell people that I came from a long line, Hawaii run, and it's a mom where So that's also one of those things that I have as my heritage. So it's, that story is not new to only okay, Messi. We have it in other parts of Yoruba land, another part of Africa. When somebody is doing so well, the whole community likes the person, the the area of Oka Kampo, the Afoja history, the in Ilori. We know what happened to the Fulani Empire that the Caliphate we have now. We love those people. They take over our land. They took over the politics and they turn against us. We have done it. So two things. I am just like the the Congo see where the warm and the cold meet. So that's why I'm, I am always critical in all my analysis. I am not biased because the two bias are in me. So it cross each other out. So I have negative bias in everything, especially when it comes to this. So we have done ourselves evil before the colonial masters came. In fact, before the Arabs came, we used to have slavery. Take it straight, straight. We have a system where you can actually own slave. My, my grandfathers have been to my village. We had a Kodi where we, you will see the small, small rooms have been there. Both Patana and Matana, we had it. It would have been destroyed now due to weather. But it's just like the slave barracoon in Badagri. It is it to our goodness? Of course not. That was what gave way. Because the old later, those ones who came, the colonial masters that came in, made a system that could foster it. But we had a decentralized system of government. The same decentralized system of government is where everything starts. It starts from the uh, show, who will be the area of Nakankafu. Then they will infiltrate the Oboni cult, that's a religious body. Then they will infiltrate the Bale, the Ajeles, those who are actually in direct contact with the people. Then they will infiltrate the, the Otun, the OC, and uh, the Abobakus, who are actually the confidants of the king. Then they infiltrate the kingmakers, infiltrate the head of the kingmaker, then the priest on the on the side you get infiltrated, and the king is actually a stuji of all of them. So if you check it, the masses to the ashore, to Ari on Kakampo, the Oboniko, the Balas, the Otun, the Oyomis to the Bashoro, the Alapin, the Aremo doing his own B2. Just imagine about four thousand years ago the way they are doing. We marry, we make love. We do all these things and then it, they were the canker ones in our fabrics that destroyed us. Do we have it alone? Of course not. We are not the only one. Because I even remember the, in the Europe, Europe, condom, beg your pardon, came because of the, the prolific and the philandering lifestyle of one of the kings in Europe. So the mysteries, the, you know, they have their own too. But there was something they had that we did not use, and that was the guns. So by the time they, they brought the guns to us, we were complacent and we became, you know, part of the whole thing. Here we are today, querying and questioning. But if you see this image that is showing on the screen, this is just our reality. Our presidents are the ones sitting in front wearing the coat of a white man, and all of our military are the ones at the back who are, but you see the building is a white man with the guns. 
And that is the state of our politics today. We have come a long way. The honor lies on this generation to know where we have gone wrong and fix it. I will fix it one step at a time, one day at a time. Thank you very much. I rest my case. Mm. Okay, thank you very much, Ajoki Ade. Really appreciate that. That is a deep knowledge. That is, you know, looking back you know, to look at now to understand what is going on now. Okay, um, Mommy Ade Kemi Ade are you there? You know, so because you know, on African Youth Parliament, we don't we don't just want to know what happened. We don't just want to talk about what happened. So now, opinion only. What would be the proposed solution? What can we do? What can Africa do? We know then we sold slaves, we did a lot of horrible things, of course. Though I don't know, I'm not sure we used our own slaves as crocodile bait. I'm not sure we used our own slaves, you know, I'm not sure we put them in the bucket for people to stone at that. If you can eat their head, you know, you get a gift. I'm not sure we did that to our slaves. I'm not sure we we looped their mouths and so on. Okay, Ajoki Adi, thank you. Yeah, we, we did a version of that. There's a story, a long history of a king who happened to be a small statured man. So the wife was like, oh, so the king wanted to have his bath. This story told by my grandmother. The king wanted to have his bath and the, the wife, the, you know, you know, when kings are in their regalia, Yoruba king, I will still remember the way there's an way to that. So when the, the man wanted to have his bath, so he now called on the youngest wife, the, the babe he just got married to, Besseli. Our king, in fact, the early, the uh, Alapioyo, Saki won't talk Besseli. There are times that he would just send the, the staff to the market. The babe will leave. I'm talking about this 2000 century. I was in Oyo doing my bit of research then, and I was at the market square. The day one of these things happened. I was quite young. But I wanted to know about my history because my maternal, my my grandmother and my paternal side is actually from the Oyo ruling empire. So, so I, I wanted to know who I was before I even entered university at that time. So we did them. So the story of the king I was saying, so you know the young wife, young, you know the way ladies are saucy, sharp mouth, you say, ah, I could tell you. You know what the man did? The king just said, okay, go and bring the head of my wife's father. And they did, they put it in the, in the bucket, and the bucket, the, the king called the lady. He said, okay, I am your Jubai law, but I'm going to go away in me, or she buy. So, okay, just, I gave you a gift, and it was the head. Of her father. So, Master the Mosumo Bani Wangbe, the Mojino, so Bani Wangbe, so we are near about Philo Bankma. We know what we did. The, the, the old wars, we take slaves. So, sometimes we actually rape our women too. We have the Ojo Nisha Kushe in the history of your balance. So, you know, when we talk about history, it's not just for us to, to just, you know, like cover the hills. It's also rise from the ashes. We are the good, but we had the ugly so much. Then we have this, these are times that the king can actually be so angry and say, and it's going to be done. Nobody's going to talk. Nobody, because so you see experience it now when it comes to political charade in every community. Remember the, the election we had in Nigeria, the kings, the violence, they're actually telling people, you must vote for this kind of, this, this political party, if you want to stay in my community. So you see, it is actually the, we do it, we have slaves and we use them on farmland. We do that a lot. But then we also, you, you know, this sexual promiscuity was also there. Although we end up taking care of them more. Sometimes, like my grandfather got married to 13 women, but he had several others that were not on the list of being wives. So they gave birth to children for him. So before he now became born again, you know, he now attended the old CMS. And then he now took on somewhere as a name. 
But what would happen to all the heels we've done? So we need to face the reality. The white team, but they, they got the upper hand because we were against each other. Consider the, the Kosoko family in Lagos. It's also a story that is not just too far. We don't pay anything in Lagos before, but now we are paying Nigeria, paying Britain, paying Africa, paying the whole world through our nose because nobody is standing for Eko anymore. If Lagos goes down, the whole of Yoruba race is going down. Not that it will go down in a day, but we would go down. Because that's our border, that's our port of entry from the overs, from everywhere. But we are just, you know, we are just like a Jessica. We are corrupt from our forefathers till now. Thank you, sir. Ah, um, okay, thank you very much, Ajoke Adi. That, that's a beautiful one, you know. Ah, most of my ballot, Okay, you must be, you must, as much as you. You are close to the king. You must also, you know, withdraw. Be careful. Toba last year, back in Jerusha, the lady that disrespected the king. Well, ah, that is also very, you know, it is wild. That is not good enough, you know. So that means we actually did things. Uh, I don't like to support our people now, but so the problem now is, it is almost like, is it a situation? This night. The question is it a situation of Iwaju Oshilo and yourself because now in this current in this current system of government, if the presidency, in fact, you see DSS bust into your house, kill you, do anything, the Olokpa can kill you and do you anything, and almost not to happen, especially if it is not even gotten on video. Even if it is gotten on video, you'll be so lucky if you can get your justice. You'll be very lucky. And now, you know, the king, the president, the governor can do anything to you, can march you, step on you, and nothing will happen. At least those days, if the kings go out, they can open a shiba for bar. You know, people could call him to order. But now, it, it can't happen. You know, we, I've never heard of uh, a political person like Nigeria now, for example. I don't know, unless the whites want to intervene. And if they are doing that, they are doing that for their own selfish purpose. That means if they notice that this particular ruler is removing the hand of colonization from his country, that's when they get rid of you. It is saying that you are a tyrant or saying you are a dictator, even when you are not. Dictatorship have been very common in Africa. But now, even our presidents that are politically elected are dictators too. So now it's not a situation of the people, the kings that were there before, okay, yeah, they, they were dictators, they can do anything, take any man they want, do anything they want. But they were under a check. In fact, it was even a special check. Holy Jali, Holy Gale, I think uh, I've heard of stories where Obama and Gale only like that, 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 that. But there are situations whereby if the Oba is going beyond what he should do, it can be checked, it can be removed, it can, you know, something will happen. There is hope. But now, is it, is it, we can't go back to the former system of colonization, of, of governance, rather. Neither, neither can we continue with this. Is there a way there can be a blend? We should just select the good from the good of all, combine that. So what, what is your opinion on this? Let's go. Anybody, Ajaki Ade, or anyone in the house, Sci-Fi, Lua, Mommy, Ade Kemi. Okay. Yeah, if you see the current image on our screen now, you'll see that Africa is under a different system of government, which is different from our own traditional I love the traditional system of government if it gives women the right to own properties to live like human beings if it gives men the right to stand above you know and stand shoulder to shoulder with the next door neighbor those are the things the white men's system of government brought that we lack so right now the check and balance that we have now it just belongs to the colonial masters, those who colonize Africa. So if you see Nigeria now, the interest of the Brits is high. And if you check other parts like uh, Nigeria Republic, the interest of the, Fry, the French is high. So like there's this country that is just the, the most 
the you know like the poorest country in Africa, they don't even have a a national stadium. They don't have a national stadium, but they are they are under the influence of a foreign body. So, just check Madagascar, the beautiful Madagascar, a place where we have diamonds in abundance. That, 70% of the roads are not motorable in a swampy area. So if we actually check the, the long chain of the colonial masters is still on us. We are yet to win ourselves out of it. And uh, it's actually a dirty situation. When you are becoming loud, when you want to speak against them, okay, remember the the Niger president that the, the Niger, I think is a is a military ruler, military head of state, the one that was he died. They said I, I, I wanted to say he was killed, but it was the one that actually gave onslaught. You know, when we say onslaught assault back to Boko Haram, he the man is dead now. Gaddafi is dead. Kwame Nkrumah gone. Obafe Mawolo were gone. We would be celebrating MKO, gone. So many, Bolaige, gone. We can keep, you know, the late Abakiari gone with the, with the secret he would have told us. They've all gone. The good ones that wanted to rise against this system that is killing Africa that is killing the world. If Africa goes into anarchy, the whole world is a problem. But you know what? The interest of the white is simple. The interest of these colonial masters, simple to today. They want Africa to kill each other, finish. If, if you like, let Cameroon face Nigeria. Let Yoruba face Hausa. Let Igbo face the Bibio. In as much you keep the problem on your continent, they don't care. So what they want is kill each other, finish. And when you are done killing each other, they take over your land with the resources. Congo is a good example where they, all the phones, if you have a phone, you must think of Congo. You must think of Congo and your heart must bleed for every child in Congo that is not getting food. If you are thinking of uh, what do we call it now, this. This is our nuclear weapon. If you are a country that you have nuclear weapon, think of Sambisa Forest. Think of Meizuguri, where all these elements are in abundance. Why is it that we have the elements in abundance in Africa, but we don't have the right to create nuclear weapon? They will say we will kill each other. Won't the whites kill each other? Does it mean our brain differs? We should begin to, you know, undo. Growing up, they used to say blacks don't read. But I tell you, before I came here, I have read today. And after I leave this studio, I will still read. I read every day. And I don't just read religious books. I don't, I will read the scriptures. I will, I will study if I, I will do everything. But I still read a secular book. I still read something to challenge myself every day. They have told us we don't like books and we take it to Clyde Sinker. We do not study international politics. The international politics is simple. He will get what, when, and now. Harold Lasser says that. I don't have to be a political scientist for me to say that. It's just for me to study. So I think this generation, we need to break free. Break free from everything they have spoken against your clan and lineage. Break free. You know, the, sometimes when I I was speaking with a Canadian, you know, and the, the man was just like, what are you still doing in that shiko? But he's also a black like me. And I was like, oh, why? If I'm not there, everybody will leave. And if everybody leaves, what will happen? And this is our mentality. And it's our woman find you. And they... I don't know that day. I, I, it was a, the worst day of my life because if somebody who was pursuing the same cause told me I should leave the same place, 
we claim to be protecting. So I was not like that. See, your goals are different from mine. I am committed to that woman by the roadside who's got five children, who doesn't know what the children will eat right now, who is likely to go beg, who is likely to go do anything. Right now on our streets, the youth have been given guns. And uh, one of our teenagers who is in Joss was going to the mall a few days back. And she was accosted on the way in Joss, Nigeria, with guns. And what do you know what they wanted to collect from her? Just her phones and all the money. How much is even the money? Somebody that we are still feeding. So for you to know how, how low we have gone on the continent of Africa, but the foreign interest remain until we break free and know that they want us to fight one another, kill one another, punish one another, and they will take over our resources. So we need to checkmate ourselves, the youth. When you are when you are when you have different opinion, we don't necessarily have to become enemies. No matter what, even if it's religious, political, even if it is our economical, financial, no matter our differences, let us not see each other to the extent that we will not kill each other, fight each other, like our fathers did. The the Osho State, there was a young, brilliant you know, as a rep member that was killed, he was murdered. At that time, we know of um, these are our Kogi people too, at the time. And some of us, we know them, we know what they do. No politician loves it because they will continue to do the bidding of their slave masters. The colonial era is here. And until we break free, we will not rise. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Ajokiade. Thank you very much. Yeah one day and very soon we'll be free of all this. So um, we would like to round up now. We'd like to thank everybody. The political system in Africa, it was wonderful. It was good. There are many advantages to it, but yet it had a downside. And so is the political system of now. Yeah, and yeah, to answer that question, okay, the, yeah, if we have nuclear weapons, <laughs> they are not afraid that we'll kill each other. They are afraid we'll kill them. They are afraid we'll fight back. They are afraid we might retaliate. We decide to retaliate. They are afraid we'll take over because there is no end. When we say let's produce, nothing will stop us from producing more and more because the resources are in abundance. And if we want to wipe them out, it's something we can actually do. But I just, I'm just so sure one day everything is going to turn around. So it's not even, so, but it starts with me. It starts with you. It starts with every one of us. A very big thank you to everybody on today's show. A very big thank you to everybody that's listening to us right now. A very big, to, a very big thank you to do this prayer for the first and only truly Pan-African radio. I thank you very much, Ajoki Ade, Saifa Ileyolua, Mumi Ade Kemi Ade Toye, and King Phoenix. It's always a pleasure to have you on this show. Next week, we should have a roundup on this and move to the next topic. It's a pleasure to have you, and I appreciate everyone who has joined us today. Those of you listening to us right now on YouTube, watching us on YouTube, watching us right now on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on any social media platform, it's a pleasure to have you there. We are Africans, and we want to redefine everything. We want to redefine Pan-Africanism. want to redefine Africanism. We want to redefine what Africa is about. Our history, we want to take the good from our history and maximize it. We want to learn from the past so that we can make the future better. Yes. And we know we'll do that. By It is in our power. It is in our hands to do it. Africa, the future of Africa is in your hands, is in my hands. So I thank everybody today. I thank those listening to us live on the uh, on the radio on Juju Square FM. Thank you very much for joining us today. If you want to donate to us, you can see the, it's displaying right now on the screen. Please, you can just uh, help us with any donation to move Africa forward, to continue doing this, to educate our people, to enlighten them, to open their eyes. So it is being displayed right now on the screen. So thank you for your donations. You can send your receipts to dudusweeofficial at gmail.com. If you want to reach out to us, you can reach out to us on info at dudusweet.com or at ajokeade at dudusweet.com. To download our app, just go to your Play Store. It's just Dudu Spray FM. In fact, if you just type Dudu Spray, it will pop up. You can check it out also on the website. Just type 
www.dudospray.com, you know, you have us there. So thank you very much. We appreciate your donations. We appreciate everything. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you for joining us today. I am your honorable host, Damine. Have a wonderful week and see you next week. Thank you very much.